Hi, I'm Adam Drake. Today I'm going to go through the steps that I do to rebuild the differentials on my cars. So there's a couple key things that I think sometimes are overlooked. I'll talk about those uh, here shortly in the video. I've done a diff building video in the past, but just wanted to update it, try to give a little bit of a closer look, and also talk about the importance of some of the steps that I do when building a diff. So let's get to it. Okay, so we've got the diff removed. I like to take cleaning putty and also microfiber towel um, and just kind of wipe off, clean, make sure if there's any uh, kind of debris or dust that sometimes will get in the gearbox. I just, the cleaning putty kind of gets in any of the little cracks and we'll clean that off. Do the same thing with the diff. And then from there, I'll go ahead and change the camera angle, get a little bit of a closer view and uh, kind of show you what I go through and what I'm looking for when I'm servicing and rebuilding my diffs. Okay, so I'm gonna start just by removing all the screws. I like to try to keep everything organized and in order. Use a new blue shop towel or a microfiber towel. That way it'll kind of soak up and you can drain the diff um, as you're servicing it. So I'll start just by removing gear, pin. Again, just trying to lay everything out to keep it as organized as possible. And I like to just drop all the parts back in kind of the same orientation. Um, in this case, I am going to go ahead and use a new set of out drives because I want to break in some drivetrain for an up and coming race. And I will save uh, these parts because these parts only have a couple weekends on them. So I want to save these out drives um, and I will mark the orientation so that I can set them aside and save them for the next race. So basically I will just lay everything out, I'm letting the diff cup drain, take a microfiber towel, wipe off any of the excess oil. Next, I like to take a toothbrush and just kind of really quickly go through, clean all the teeth on the ring gear. Everything was pretty clean, um, but again, just wanting to make sure makes it easier to be able to inspect the parts to see if there's been any damage or if maybe something got in there or if it happened to skip under acceleration or braking. But from there, pull the out drive. And you can see there's still a fair bit of the premium white Mugen grease. Um, so it's really doing its job, even though the car's been run a few days at the track. Um, that grease is still holding up and doing its job. You will also want to kind of inspect the diff cup and the ring gear to see if there's any oil that's been seeping. If any oil's been seeping or getting past the O-ring and this grease, it's time to go ahead and replace the O-ring um, or possibly switch the grease that you're using. So go ahead and clean up the out drive. I use the eight by, I think it's eight by 10 or eight by 12 by 0.2 shims. Um, so you, you wanna be really, really careful uh, when you pull the bearing off to make sure that you check. Uh, sometimes you'll pull the bearing off just like when I did there, the shim will stick to it. You'll go to clean this and you'll forget to put the shim back on. So you wanna make sure you uh, are careful there to make sure that the you don't lose the shim. I'll just really quickly check the bearing. Everything feels super good. Do the same thing here. Now you can see this is not quite as clean as the ring gear side. There is still a bunch of grease, but it has a little bit more color to it. Um, but overall, still doing its job. Um, 
I don't see really any seeping or leaking. If I did, I would go ahead and, and change the O-ring, but I think we're, I think we're fine. Do the same thing, wipe off, clean this bearing, check and make sure that the bearing still spins super free and clean up the diff, diff cup. Okay, so with the outdrives that I'm taking out of the car, you can see this one's marked one, this one's marked two, because they were previously run on the front diff. So because I don't have any races coming up for the next couple weeks, it's just gonna kind of be testing and practice. I'm gonna actually just put a brand new set of outdrives here in the rear. Normally what I would do is I would just shift the outdrives from the front of the car back. So the left front would move to the left rear, the right front would move to the right rear. So what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm gonna remark these outdrives now that they've been run on the rear of the car. So this was a two, this is now gonna become a three. And then this was a, I'm sorry, that was a one and became a three, and this was a two and is now becoming a four. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mark these new ones, four and three. And again, if you watch my video on New Car Blues, you'll understand a little bit more what I'm talking about as far as shifting the drivetrain parts, but I use the Mugen Premium Grease. Part number is B0339. This is by far the best grease that I've used. Um, I've also used Red Tack and also a Mobile One um, Black Grease. All three work well, but it seems like the Mugen Grease just holds up. It's a little bit thicker, maybe a little bit um, kind of like stickier feeling when you first put it on, but the nice thing with that is it doesn't fling off and it seems to hold up and last much longer than some of the other greases. Now, this isn't something you wanna just look past and say, oh, I can just throw any grease on there. It, it'll serve its purpose and it'll do its job. This is a super, super important thing to consider the handling and the consistency of your car. You never want to use like a blue or a green, just O-ring grease. You can use the O-ring grease on the actual O-ring itself, but not on the outdrive, the ring gear, and the diff cup. And that's because the O-ring grease is used to protect the silicone from getting silicone oil from getting on the silicone o-ring. This is a really, really high stress, high temperature. Um, when that drive shaft's going up and down, it's kind of pushing and pulling on the outdrive. And this outdrive is trying to, to basically walk in and out and get pushed up and down. So it's really, really important to make sure you use a really good high temp, high pressure grease in this area. If you don't, what happens is the grease will kind of burn up really quick or not do its job. And the outdrives will actually have additional friction, but that friction will also be very inconsistent because again, as the outdrives or the diff is trying to diff out and the outdrives getting pushed or pulled, um, it can almost lock up one side of the diff and free up the other side. So definitely do not overlook greasing your outdrive cup, the ring gear, and also the diff cup. Another thing is I always like to take a either Exacto or a 1.5 and just run it up and down the, the grooves in the diff cup to try to feel where these cross pins ride. Because what can happen over time, if the diff cup gets really old, it'll start to get just a little bit of an indent, or in some cars it'll actually notch. Any indent or notching is bad. If you notice anything or you can feel anything when running 
the exacto up and down, you'll want to change the diff cup because the the diff cup is holding the cross pins and basically controlling the gear mesh of the internal gears in the diff. So if there's any notching, what can happen is those gears can kind of shift. And if they shift, it's going to change the gear mesh and you can actually have the diff maybe not lock up, but actually bind up. And again, it's going to create some inconsistencies. It's going to make it to where as you're going through a bump and one wheel is trying the diff out, it can almost make it like a spool or lock up the diff, which is going to make it very, uh, very hard to drive and ill handling. So from there, I'd like to go ahead and put enough fluid almost to the top of the outdrive. And then from there, I'll just drop the gears back in in the same orientation that I took them out. I like to push down, make sure it's, it's really seated good. And then just do the same thing with the small gears. Then I'll go ahead. You gotta be super careful with the Mugen diff fluid. It's super good fluid, but if you squeeze the bottle too hard, the cap will shoot off. So I like to just make sure I get oil where the cross pins go. And at this point, I would more oil is better than not enough because I'm gonna go ahead and wipe wipe off any of the excess here in a minute. But I like to drop in the final sun gear, just kind of work it back and forth just a touch. I try to make the orientation in line with one of the cross pins, just makes it a little bit easier to kind of line up when dropping the ring gear on. And again, I will make sure that there's plenty of diff fluid. I'll just go ahead and kind of put, put it around the outside, let this sit for just, just a few seconds. Um, you can use a pump um, if you're in a hurry, but in most cases, as long as you don't really work the diff and create air, there's not gonna be much air in the diff. So from there, I hold the diff and I'll take my index finger on my left hand and I'll just push down and then wipe off any excess oil. That had almost the perfect amount, just very, very little excess oil. And then I'll take a 1.5 and just kind of relieve some of that oil because that's gonna be uh, filled up with the outdrive from the ring gear side. So same thing, I like to line up the pin in the center of the holes. That way it just makes it easier to line everything up to where the holes in the ring gear and the holes in the diff cup uh, line right up. Now, if the diff cup is older, I know it's plastic, but I still like to use just a little bit of thread lock that I go ahead and put just a drop on each of the, the screws before assembling the diff back together. Because the diff, again, it, it, it's put under so much stress and load and there's so much heat and then also with the Mugen cars, the diff cups are a really, really hard material that has some glass in them. So the thread lock will actually help bind um, or bond and secure the screws for, for longer races or longer time uh, between servicing. So I run the screws down just kind of snug and then I like to go back and hand tighten everything in kind of a, a cross pattern. Take a microfiber towel, wipe everything down. You can see it's super clean. Any excess oil or if anything kind of ran though, you can, again, just clean it with a microfiber towel. And then what I'll do is check the diff action, make sure everything is nice and free. I'll drop this back in the vehicle and then I apply a little bit of Protec uh, Premium White Grease onto the ring gear 
and then just kind of roll that uh, the drivetrain it just helps make the gears a little bit quieter and also hold up and last a little bit longer and is a little bit more efficient um, for the drivetrain so again just to kind of recap pretty simple basic um, how to build your diff but wanted to talk a bit about the importance of using a high quality grease on the outdrive, ring gear, diff cup, and then the other outdrive. And other than that, you're ready to put this back in the car and hit the track.